Hello, it's uh, Paul Beck with the GAIN, and I'm continuing my discussion on the latest um, state-of-the-art climate models, CMIP-6 models, and what they say about drought around various locations of the world. And just as a recap, most people think of drought in terms of, just in terms of one thing, in terms of the precipitation level. You know, when, it's, when there's very little precipitation, then drought, right? But there's actually some other factors that have more robustness, and those are soil moisture content, both at the surface and in the soil column going down, and uh, runoff. So I'm going to show you all of the key figures from this uh, new, new research paper, and... Uh, you know, I hope everybody's uh, staying safe. Uh, this is my coronavirus uh, stress ball. So crush the coronavirus, right? And Shackleton is ver looking very curiously at this. He's just sitting on a chair next to me. He's a bit too hot to hold again. He got me sweating. <laughs> so, okay, so I showed this plot these plots of the global surface air temperature anomalies under the different warming scenarios okay um, and this is a th this map is these are the three different scenarios that are looked at RCP 2.6 RCP 4.5 RCP 7.0 and this is the time of year December January February March April May June July August September October November and the brown areas are decreases in precipitation levels. The blue areas are increases. So you can see that the north is getting more precipitation. Parts of Africa, uh, North Africa are getting more precipitation, but there's significant um, drying. Um, in, there, there's significantly less precipitation in some of the regions in the Southern Hemisphere, uh, South America and uh, South Africa and uh, some in Australia also. But that's not the key uh, change. The key, ch okay, soil moisture is a bigger factor here. So this is the soil moisture um, changes at the surface and in the soil column going down into the soil. These are the three different scenarios again, RCP 2.6, 4.5, and 7.0. And what you can see is um, these are the changes of the uh, reduction of, of soil moisture, the brown areas. Um, increases of soil moisture are in the blue areas, okay? And you can see that some areas are getting, the soil moisture is increased in, in Africa, you know, in parts of Russia. Um, and this is, uh, you know, these are divided into two periods in the year, the winter, October, November, December, January, February, March, and the summer, April, May, June, July, August, uh, September. Okay, so you can see the changes and the changes in soil moisture at the surface actually um, are, is different from that of the column because there's some memory effect with the column when there's water that gets into the soil column and, and keeps it wet, it can stay wetter. You know, if it's wet in one season, that can carry over into another season. So you can see this type of pattern that's going on there. And in terms of runoff, um, this is the, uh, it's, it, it's still the three different scenarios. Um, and there's runoff at the surface um, and then there's total, total runoff. And this includes uh, the runoff um, from the ground into rivers and lakes, but also into the ground going beneath the soil. Okay, so if there's a lot more runoff, okay, so the runoff is projected to increase greatly, you know, in the Northern Hemisphere, for example, and in very different regions. So when the runoff greatly increases, then, um, there's less water, you know, at the surface and, and we can get, this is the, the hydro, hydrological drought that I talked about in the previous video. The soil moisture is the agricultural type drought and the precipitation is the meteorological type drought. So those three factors are coming into play 
and by robustness is there's a lot of black areas here and the black areas they're non-robust changes so the robustness coefficient is less than 0 0.90 so there's not agreement between the diff all the different models that are run in those black hashed regions but there's there's a lot more um, agreement across the planet in this robustness factor um, for soil moisture and for runoff changes. Okay, um, now the CMIP6 results are compared with the CMIP5 results. So the red areas are where the, the latest models are showing it to be drier. Okay, and the blue areas are where the latest model is showing it to be wetter. Okay, so there is, um, there is changes, but the changes are mostly at the borders or at the intersections between really dry areas and, and uh, wetter areas. Okay, so I'm not going to focus on that too much. This is the fractional land area in percentage or in fraction. This would be 10%, 20%, 30% of the land area. And we're, it's excluding um, Antarctica and Greenland. So it's a fractional land area of the planet excluding Antarctica and Greenland with robust drying responses. So that means there's 90% agreement or more between all of the different models. And it's done for it divides the year into the winter and the summer, basically. Well, fall, winter, part of the spring, and, you know, spring, summer, part of the fall. Okay, and what you can see is, you know, these are the different scenarios here, and you can see the precipitation. So this, the, 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 the loss of precipitation, the drought, the precipitation drought or the meteorological drought, you know, maybe, uh, you know, covering about 10% of the total land area, but the soil moisture at the surface is more like 40, between four, 40 and 50% of the land area. And if you take the whole column, it's a little, it's more like 40%. And then the runoff numbers are also higher than the precipitation numbers. They're more like in the 15% level. Okay, so what that's showing, and that's the different uh, models as you get more and more forcing. So what that's showing is that, you know, the drought that is occurring, so this is the uh, agricultural drought and will affect crop growth more because it's the soil moisture content. This is the precipitation and this is so-called hydrological uh, drought uh, changes in, in runoff. And then this is uh, for, so this is for the, the winter, uh, and this is for the the summer, okay? So you can see the the changes from from the two seasons, um, and uh, yeah, you can see see what's going on there. Um, and then the so basically, then the ex the the parts of the world that are sub will be subject to extreme drought risk. In, in this time period, 2071 to 2100, with these three scenarios, and remember, you can change this number, you know, if things happen much faster, this might end up being 2050 or 2060 or whatever, uh, but the patterns uh, should be similar to what, what there is with all of these state-of-the-art climate models, if they're fairly accurate. So this is the, um, this is the frequency of occurrence uh, increase in the most extreme events, and uh, this is this is the uh, okay. Uh, it, it, so there's the two different scales here. This is like uh, three or four times, three to three, three and a half times worse drought. Com you know, in these scenarios, in this time period, relative to the uh, baseline. Okay, so what you can see is that the the uh, brown areas here, as you get darker and darker, um, they get more and more significant. So you can see, you know, what happens with precipitation. This is a results from, I showed you previously, but this is with everything on one plot. So we've got the precipitation here. We've got the soil moisture here of the surface, soil moisture of the column, runoff, 
right and run off so you can see the effect the the impact of all of these different effects on the drought that increase you know on the increase of the drought risk okay so the drought risk here for example over most of south america is from soil moisture in the column is decreasing significantly um, precipitation's only decreasing in the northern parts soil moisture at the surface mostly in the north and uh, at the tip and uh, you know runoff changes and so on okay um, and this is for october november december january february march now the um okay and, and you can see that the northern areas are um have the least amount of drought risk because you know in, in our warming world there's more and more um excursions of warm humid air going up into the arctic causing uh, rainfall events as opposed to uh, snowfall events um, and this is the changes um, in the summer months april may june july august september um, right so you can compare this to to this and look at the region where you are and you know if a region has extremely high drought risk it's a region you probably want to avoid living in if you have uh, flexibility of where you are okay then you can look at the average annual changes and what you can see is you know many parts of the this is the change in precipitation these are all the RCP um, scenarios and what you can see is you know as the forcing as the warming increases the precipitation increases in a number of different regions but that doesn't mean there's some regions where the precipitation increases, yet um, there's more runoff from the surface, okay, and also more total runoff. So that can, even though the precipitation can increase slightly in a particular region or increase in a region you are, okay, if it happens mostly in the winter and the ground is frozen, then there'll be a lot more runoff. Or if the precipitation is following in extreme torrential rain events then most of it will just run off into rivers and lakes etc it doesn't have time to soak into the ground or if it's during spring melt um, the ground is saturated so a lot of rainfall it just can't go into the ground it's already saturated you know and uh, so there's a lot of different factors in in drought that you might not have thought of or considered this is the changes in soil moisture you know at the surface and the total column moisture and um, okay you can see so the brown areas are decreases in uh, are, are, are decreases in soil moisture and the blue areas are increases in soil moisture okay and you can see you know the severity increase so you know we're, we're heading to a lot of areas will you know even some areas that are getting more precipitation in the future can still have severe droughts because of the runoff and soil moisture factors. Um, this is uh, so. This is the and now the maps are also done for comparing to the baseline of 1985 to 2014, a more recent baseline, as opposed to all of these uh, ones which are based on which are relative to the 1851 to 1880 baseline. Okay, so it's for 2071 to 2100, but it's got a baseline. So, so obviously the fact the effect is 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 more significant than it is. But they wanted to compare it to the more recent baseline, um, which uh, you know, be, which people can. This is you know, people are aware more of what happened in this particular timeline, and they can see how the changes are expected to happen in the future. Um, in these other these, these different baselines okay so so that's the gist of it so so some of the key factors are the sign and magnitude of drought responses depends heavily on the region on the season and on the indicators we look at soil moisture runoff uh, precipitation and um, hotter regions um, more drought of all different types okay so and this is very important to know in for growing food. Anyway, thank you for listening. Bye for now.